Right, we're back. We just had a lovely lunch at the Hope Inn at New Haven, and we're ready to answer some more of your questions. Right, still at New Haven. Where are we up to yeah. with the questions? So, Too Young To Be Old asks, when you did your Norway trip, did you have enough gas? How much does the gas tank hold? And what software do you use on your tablet? Uh, he looked for Pocket Earth and couldn't find it. So. Okay, well, let's start with Pocket Earth. Pocket Earth mm. is very good and it's my favourite app, but unfortunately it's only for OIS. So if you're looking for um, Pocket Earth on Android, you're not going to find it. Uh, and I can't really recommend anything else that's quite like it, really. No, because we don't know. No. We use iOS. So. Yeah. What else was it? Oh, um, gas. Yeah, we had enough gas for Norway. So we spent three weeks in Norway and we didn't have to fill up with gas um, LPG until we got to Denmark. No. So the gas we had had lasted left over from our previous trip for the whole three weeks we were in Norway. No problem. We weren't using it much for heating, really, were we? That um, I can remember. Heating, oh, I can't really remember now. We certainly weren't running we, the heater all the time. Not so, all the time, um, but we did have some heating on yeah, at some point. But it's not like in the depths of winter no. where, oh, it, no, you know, if where. we go away on a winter trip, mm. the, then the gas will probably last, what, a couple of weeks couple if of we're weeks, doing yeah. heating all the time yeah. and cooking. Yeah, we did a lot of cooking in uh, Norway. But though. the gas just being used for cooking just lasts. Yeah, and a bit for, of heating. For the whole summer it would last, wouldn't it, without yeah. filling out? Yeah, you'd probably, you know, a good six weeks or yeah, more easy. if you're just using it for cooking. How much does the tank hold? I think it's nine litres. Yeah. Um, I, we've never, I've never put nine litres in, no. have we? It's always sort of... It's never totally empty. goes off about no. seven litres every time we fill it up. Yeah. So Chatty Batty asks, I'd like to ask, have you always lived in the same house? Uh, since we've been married, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've never moved. <laughs> yeah. um, well, what do you want to say about it first? Well, well, we moved in when we got married. So 1985. 1985. What's that? 38 years ago this May. Yeah, we bought it before we got married, didn't we? Because I was living there Just a little before, bit, a little yeah, bit before, we got, before married. we got married. We finally, yeah. and um, we'd really pushed ourselves with the mortgage, yeah, the mortgage, hadn't we? And it, we paid a lot more than we were planning on spending because yeah. we were having trouble finding the right house. But it was a pittance back then, wasn't it? It was forty-four thousand, wasn't it? That um, house. Yeah. Forty-four thousand yeah, pounds. <laughs> and, and one sold. What was the one that sold recently? 400,000. 400. Yeah. 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 So the mortgage really stretched us and we were paying mm. about 15% interest back then as well. And we so only had um, interest only, didn't we? Mortgage? Uh, yes. In, well, it was an endowment. Endowment. Yes. And the endowment didn't meet. It wouldn't have covered. No. The, uh, didn't cover the cost. But no. luckily we'd mm. saved money by then, hadn't we? Yeah. And we paid it off early anyway. Paid it off early. When you retired. Yeah. And yeah, and we just didn't move. Um, it's a three bedroom semi, so yeah. um, we never had children, so it was plenty big enough for just the two of us. There is more of a story to that in the way, I think, because m my mum and dad were forever moving homes. Uh, and my dad, uh, mum would get the house just the way she wanted it, decorated mm. and etc. And then dad would get shifty feet again and say I, I fancy moving so um, they had several houses when I was living with them mm. as a kid I remember my mum one day really sort of losing her rag because she was absolutely sick of mm. moving and I think me I thought that that impacted on me yeah and I've never ever fancied moving I would only move if there was a necessary it was necessary if it was necessary to move and because we're centrally based in Mid Sussex, yeah. uh, you were, when you're in Sussex Police, wherever they posted you was always a, a reasonable distance yeah, to travel I for work. Yeah, I could commute. Yeah, if I so had to. So we never had to move house for that. No. So. Um, but would, what would we do next time when we come back in the next life? I think we would move, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would. We would probably go up the chain. Keep up. With, keep going up the ladder it's a good investment a house is yeah. probably the best investment you can make having said that we have probably saved a mm. fortune not moving 
Yes, yeah, it does come with its costs. Yeah. So it but, swings around about, yeah. isn't it? But, but we're quite happy where we are. So. Yeah, I'm very happy. Very yeah, happy. I've got yeah. no desire to move at this stage, no. Okay, I've got another question here about why do you not want a toilet in your van? Hmm. which we've talked about before on other videos about the toilets yeah. situation. So what's your view on that? Uh, my view is I don't see the point in having a dedicated space or room or cupboard, whatever, to a toilet and a shower when you're not going to be using it very often. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have the space in the van. Even when we had a caravan, we didn't use the, sh the shower and toilet. Well, we used the toilet, but we didn't use the shower very much. Did well, we? we did in our last caravan, which was a much bigger one. Oh, right. We used the sh I used the shower all the time in that. Oh, did you? Every day. I never used to bother. I used to go over that oh, no. toilet block. I liked the that. shower. In our last caravan, it had a nice end shower, and I, mm. I used that all the time. But when we had smaller caravans with showers in, we didn't use the shower because it would have been too much of a pain to clean it. Um, yeah. You know those ones where it's a shower and a toilet all in one. Oh yeah, and everything gets wet. Everything gets wet. It was would be too much of a pain to clean, yeah. so we never used it. And you never liked <clears throat> emptying the toilet cassettes, did you? When I, you had a toilet. It didn't used to bother me that much, but mm. um, it's not a pleasant thing to do. And um, the main reason for us though is space. Mm. Okay, so in this van, every scrap of space has a purpose mm. and giving up half our cupboard space under there for a chemical toilet was didn't make any sense and also of course we don't go on campsites and we've got no intention at this stage of our camper vanning to to use sites unless we're meeting up with some other people yeah or if we need a laundry or something yeah and campsites <clears throat> convenient and that means that getting rid of your chemical toilet is mm far more difficult mm. than it is dealing with a pee bottle and just tipping it in a local WC. Yeah, a public toilet. Yeah, and the yeah. Bivy system, if you were, you're interested mm. in that, check out yeah. our video on our toilet. Yeah. Works perfectly well mm. and we know several other vanners who use the same system mm. and have got no intention of getting a toilet mm. in the van. But if you've got a really big van or your full timing, mm. then I would my advice would be completely different. Yeah. Get a toilet, get a chemical toilet, get two or three chemical, uh, sorry, uh, cassettes, mm. so to lengthen the, the time you can go off, off grid. Mm. Mm. And um, that's totally different. Mm. Okay, next question from Lisa Steves. What's your favourite place, you, your most favourite place you have visited so far, UK or further afield? Mm, go on then, what's yours? <laughs> Gosh, that's difficult. We have been to a lot of places. Um, well, if we just take the Little Red Camper where we've been, um, then, well, it's difficult because Norway obviously was lovely. Some lovely sites in Norway. Um, but where you, what you, I think the way we should approach this question is, is where yeah. have you felt it was idyllic? The favorite idyllic place. Because that is quite rare. Very rare, yeah. Yeah, very rare. The one that always springs to mind was when we were in France, down through that pine forest, which was a dead end road right to the end, and you ended up on the cliffs. That's Spain, wasn't it? Or was that Spain? I think it was yeah, in Spain. That's just in the border. Yeah. Just when we went from France into Spain. Yeah. And we stayed there two nights. Yeah. That, that was idyllic. That was idyllic. Cause there was no other vans there. Yeah. Just us. And very few other people. Very few people came by in the whole two days we yeah. were there. And that was our first experience of being able to park up somewhere. Yeah without having the thought of having to move on yes, or anything. Yeah, you felt safe and it was quiet. Yeah. Yeah. The one, I really enjoyed that, that site for sure. And the other one that sticks in my mind was in the Isle of Man, mm. up at the northern tip of the island. Yes. By the yeah. lighthouses. <clears throat> Point of Air. Point of Air. Yes. I, uh, that was just another yeah. absolutely idyllic mm. spot. And the fact that you could just walk down the beach and watch the seals. Seals were just there. Who were yeah. so close you could yeah. almost touch them. 
that was mm. a magical spot as well. I think they've stopped overnight camping there now. So we've been told, which is, which is such a shame. Very sad. Very sad. Right, I'm going to end this one here. There will be more coming. We'll be answering more of your questions. Our normal videos will be on Friday nights and we'll slip in these Q&As where we can. Thanks for watching and a big thank you to all of our subscribers. Hit that subscribe button, it's absolutely free.